I will say having, sh w when you show people uh, who haven't gotten into this stuff, um, both, I, I don't know what people are more blown away by. Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Randy at AGM. I've got Justin with me. This is another episode of AGM Table Talks. This is a new video series we're doing. The idea behind it being an open discussion. It's less formal. It's more about just us having a conversation about topics that we see and come across in the thermal and night vision space. So a good topic for this uh, video today we've got for you is night vision. And really we're talking about analog night vision versus thermal. So being a electro optics company, we do both. We have night vision, we have thermal. Um, a lot of our sales and focus is on thermal. A lot of hunters do thermal, but we do sell a good amount of night vision and they are completely different um, in terms of their technology and their application, but there still is a good enough crossover with what you're able to do with each that we do get a lot of questions. Should I get into thermal first? Should I buy a thermal scope? Got a couple thousand dollars, or should I get night vision? What what would you do? And I um, think I think there's also a lot of people that are. I mean, like the night vision is, the nods are like that's the sexy thing. That's the cool like. It's, that's the cool guy. It's thing. so cool, and a lot of guys might feel pressured to get into that or want it because it's so cool. When really, for like their most common general purposes, yeah. the thermal might actually serve them better. Yeah, I will say having sh when you show people uh, who haven't gotten into this stuff. Um, both, I, I don't know what people are more blown away by. Um, night vision's kind of surprising for people because they don't understand like, wow, well, like, you know, you gotta use infrared lasers and stuff and nobody can see that except for you. Like there's some things like that that are cool. Thermal blows people away because of what it looks like to observe the world in temperature. Yeah. <laughs> so um, having um, my own experience, um, if we're just talking about the regular guy, Right? Uh, obviously, if you're a law enforcement guy, um, this is maybe not the right video for you. <laughs> Realistically, if you're uh, military and law enforcement, we get a lot of, uh, you know, we, we do sell a lot to the military and, and, you know, law enforcement, militaries around the world. But in terms of like thermal scopes, they're less common because of positively identification issues, right? So there's a lawsuit attached to every bullet when you're in law enforcement, when you're in law enforcement. So you usually can't get away with, you know, acquiring thermal scopes and taking shots at people when you can't identify, you know, their, the color of their skin and their, you know, their gender and stuff like that yeah. very well because you're lot. just looking at temperature. It's a lot easier to tell through thermal, like, <laughs> yes, that's a hog and not a, and not a different animal. Right. But not necessarily that easy to say, yes, this is that sub suspect and not <laughs> yeah, this person. Yeah. So because of that, you do see a lot more night vision in the, like, professional space but in the hunting space we're talking about regular guys who for the most part if you're here that's probably you um you're wanting to get in you're wanting to get into night hunting right night shooting um there's a couple different routes you could go um having experienced both what's your take just right from the get <clears throat> i mean they're both awesome for different reasons how can I, I mean, how can I pick a favorite? <laughs> <laughs> I, I usually tell people this. Um, w when they ask, do I get one or the other? I say, unfortunately, um, like a lot of things in life, with, especially with expensive hobbies, the, uh, the road where, you know, where this trail or, you know, where this train goes is you're going to end up with both. Um, the reason for that is because of the difference in where they shine. So to talk about that a little bit, Analog night vision amplifies visible light. You can also see infrared light. Now, thermal, to put it simply, sees surface temperature. How it does that with a germanium lens, it actually sees a different kind of wavelength of infrared light. But you, like with an infrared laser that you could see with night vision, you can't see that laser under thermal, right? Um, you could see through glass with night vision. Glass is just a solid surface with thermal. So if you step behind a window, you can't see through it with a thermal scope, 
right? So some people can drive with night vision. You're driving around, you have infrared lights on and stuff, and you can drive. You can't drive if you had like thermal binos. That's not a thing, unless you're in some dune buggy or whatever, and you've got no window, yeah. right? But even then, there's latency. It's a different kind of technology. You're looking at a, a small screen. Um, because of where they shine, there's usually, there's a, there's a good amount of crossover. Um, when it comes to stationary shooting, I'm standing still or in a blind, right? Which one's better, would you say? Thermal. Thermal. For sure, thermal. And why? Uh, and because I, I think that there are, th like, you're going to be able to, I don't want to say see more, oh, yeah. but like identify more. Absolutely. There are things that can hide when you're looking through your night vision that you're going to be able to see really well through your thermal. You can see grass, especially with sensors these days. You're going to see way more detail as the technology keeps you know, advancing. Um, but you're going to see heat signature. Whereas if I'm staring at a coyote or a hog in a thick brush 50 yards in front of me, if it's not moving and I'm just using night vision, most likely I won't see it at all. Yeah, and whereas, you can zoom with this as well. Exactly, and whereas with the thermal scope, you're gonna see it like that, mm -hmm. and you're gonna know it's there. Um, where it gets difficult, is if it's in the middle of the night, is when you wanna get up and move. Yep. As soon as you wanna move, if you ever tried walking around at nighttime, with, and the idea being that you don't wanna like turn on a light, if you're gonna try to use like a thermal monocular, that's not going to be a thing. <laughs> it's not going to be doable. This gets sketchy fast. It does. Yeah. It does. Um, movement, especially driving. I can't do that at all with thermal, right? I can't see through glass. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of people... When and, they've and, you, and, and with any of these thermal units, I mean, you're, you're focusing to a certain distance. Mm -hmm. So if you're focused to see something that's 10, 20, 30, 40 yards out, whatever it is... Anything that's close to you, it's blurry. You, yeah, you, you can't make out any details at all, and so that can get really dangerous. Yeah, trying to walk around in, in brush or like wooded areas or whatever. It's uh, it's not ideal. Yeah, it's not ideal. I think most people start with thermal for a few reasons. Um, it's for one, we should talk about this: the barrier to entry with thermal. We're really talking about a scope. You get a thermal. You get a thermal scope. You set it up on a gun like this. You can go night hunting. It's yeah. that simple. Um, people quickly learn, hey, this sucks to do without being able to like spot. And so they'll get a second thermal device, like a monocular, to stand there and, and scan because you don't want to be on your rifle looking around. Um, but you get into that enough and people say, hey, I'd like to move around, potentially drive around without my lights on and not spook all the animals and then do other things and I can't do it with thermal, and night vision's gonna shine. So when it comes to movement, as a general rule, night vision's gonna win, like hands down. When it comes to stationary shooting, thermal's gonna win. You can do it with night vision, but there, you have to have the aid, in, in most cases, of some illumination, and you have to have Usually it's great if you have a buddy who has thermal. <laughs> but, but like, you have to have somebody who's next to you, uh, or you have to have some kind of movement, and you've got to have like an infrared laser, right? Um, night vision scopes are kind of a thing, but not not really. Most mostly we're talking about goggles or monoculars, like an NVG or a PVS14, and it's helmet mounted. You're holding your gun and you're pushing a button to project the laser that is infrared, and you zero that. Right, and you can shoot. I mean, I've I've sh I've shot some stuff. Right, we've taken animals before with night vision. It's totally doable, and it's a lot of fun. But when it comes to comparing it to using thermal, thermal's just going to be better at that. Yep. The other thing on the barrier to entry, um, even if you went with a cheap route, like let's say let's say this is a six forty unit, you're spending close to four grand, four five grand for a nice thermal scope, like that's just not gonna get you as far on this side of the, the, the table over here. If we're talking about night vision goggles, I mean, goggles or even monoculars, right? In the case of a PVS-14, $4,000, uh, you could easily spend two to $4,000 on a monocular, right? That's in various qualities depending on the tube. And 
when you're talking about dual tubes like NVGs, um, they cost a lot more, you're double essentially, right? So this a setup like this, you could easily be 10 grand deep before you're able to really get out there and, and do anything. And that also doesn't include a, an infrared laser an device, or an yeah. infrared illuminator. So for like instance on, on like this setup, right? This is an expensive setup, but like, this is expensive stuff. You, the, the laser, if you're, if you're setting up a night vision build, the total cost factored into what you have to put on your gun to be able to actually start shooting with night vision. If you're not just talking about, well, I just want night vision to move around and drive around and that's fine. Um, but to be able to shoot with night vision, the barrier to entry is much, much higher. Um, cool factor though, if I was being honest, I prefer night vision. Yeah, uh, super oh, cool. If we're talking about cool factor, practical, practically speaking, if, if I'm just hunting, if I'm going out and hunting, which, which I do, um, thermal's just the way. It's just the way. And it's the way to have a, a great ton of fun. Um, but yeah, yeah. Um, when it comes down to it, I know guys that have gotten into the, the the industry, so to speak, night hunting, and they've gone the night vision route first, um, they eventually get thermal and, and vice versa because it is one of those things where eventually you're probably going to get some night vision. But there are a lot of guys who do thermal that don't get night vision. They're just going out hog hunting, and, and they don't need to spend all that money. Yeah, right? and what I, tell, what I tell people when they ask, like, what is the role of each of these things, what I usually say is, like, when you're driving out to where you're going or when you're, in the side by side, like ripping out to your location, you're, you're gonna wanna have night vision on, and then when you get there and you set up, you're laying prone or whatever you're on your gun, then you're, you're switching to thermal. Yeah. And if you wanna go to a new location from there, we're walking over to that side of the field, you're gonna have your night vision, and yeah. then you're gonna get back on your gun and be on your thermal. And a lot of that depends on the application, right? Um, hog hunting, for example, hogs are, I mean, I'm not gonna say they're not hard to kill, but compared to a lot of things, they're not hard to kill. <laughs> okay, I'll just say that. Um, it, it's, it's not like that it's easy, but I mean, you can drive around, you can just, they, they're not spooked, they're in the field, you can see them 100 yards, 150, 200 yards away out in some field or whatever, and you can have your lights on. You could just stop, roll down your window, and you're spotting there with your thermal monocular or whatever, and then, hey, there they are, and then you kind of just drive close, and it, with, very low light, maybe some moonlight. You can just kind of walk across the field and be careful. You could sneak up on them with a the team. This is what I've done. You sneak up on them. We didn't have any night vision. Kind of stumble in a little bit, but we snuck up close to 50 yards on a group of hogs or whatever, and then you can light them up, and you're all running thermal, and you could do that for years and buy a bunch of thermal stuff and, like, be fine and have no real need to get into night vision. Um, if you're hunting coyotes, it's... A, if you're doing night hunting with coyotes, um, coyotes can be hard. Um, they can be a lot harder. Um, you you often w would there's a I guess there's a better argument to be made for sneaking to your location when you're hunting coyotes because you kind of want to be driving around with no lights on, want to be quiet. You want to be able to walk into wherever you're going to set up your stand and, and do some calls, and that's going to be a whole lot easier with night vision. You can do it with thermal as well, but it's gonna be a whole lot easier with night vision. And the chances of you spooking anything that you maybe didn't see with your truck lights or whatever, go away if you're using night vision. So it, it kind of depends on, like many things, application. Yeah, what's your purpose? And I mean, analog night vision, looking through MVGs, this is a, this is a one times just like you Correct. would see through your eyes, you're seeing through the night vision. Yeah, one power. Yeah, one yeah. power. Yeah. yeah, like depending on the scope that you get, a lot of scopes, and for good reason, are going to have a higher base magnification. Just like what the lowest power on that scope is still going to be a two, three, four times magnified. Yeah. Um, for good reason, depending on like the unit that you go with. And so that's another thing to take into consideration. Depending on what you're doing, you know, this is maybe not gonna be yeah. your choice for something that's up close or you have some sort of like a CQB sure. type application, whatever. Um, you don't wanna be stuck at three times necessarily looking through a thermal scope. Nope. Just comes down to what you're doing. Yep. Simple as that. Um, I love both. If you're interested in both, check them out on our website. Uh, give us a call, you can always ask questions, drop a comment if you guys like. 
Um, that's all I've got for this one. Yeah. What, 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 what do you prefer? Let's see it down in the comments. If you yeah. got any hot takes on the uh, thermal versus night vision debate, we want to see them down in the comments. Hot takes. What do you guys think? All right. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time.